All right. Thank you, Edmund, for coming for the interview. Please introduce yourself to the audience. Please spell your name and birthplace and birthday. My name is Edmund, E-D-M-U-N-D, mm -hmm. R-U-O-S. Birthplace is Bridgeville, Delaware. Bridgeville? Bridgeville. Uh -huh. Delaware. Okay, and what's, what is your birthday? April the 1st, 1932. Should I believe it? Yes. April 1st, baby. April Fool's baby, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Ross, what is the ethnic origin of this German. name? German. Mm -hmm. We have relatives in Switzerland. Switzerland? We, in Switzerland, yeah. Burn, mm -hmm. Around Bern, Switzerland. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about your family when you were growing up. We lived on a farm mm -hmm. uh, in Bridgeville. We had 300 acres of apple trees. 300 acres of apple trees. Wow. It's a lot of work. <laughs> and? And we raised apples all, of course we packed, picked and packed and uh, shipped apples to all over the world from there in freight cars and trucks. Freight cars and trucks and any, all kinds of vehicles. You still like apple or you're sick and tired of it? No, I, li I loved apple. <laughs> but you ate apple in many different ways, right? Most likely, yeah, I did. Tell me about it. How you? Well, generally, I would just grab it and put your front teeth <laughs> on it and, and pull it, break off a piece, you know, like that. And yeah. Eat that and then break off big pieces. I never, we never bit, we took small pieces. We just apple pie. Oh yeah. What was your favorite item made out of apple? Cider, probably. Cider? Yeah, that's a German, right? Yeah. We had a cider press. We could press a lot of cider. A lot of apples. We get mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a barrel of cider. We could do, do a barrel in one, one, one uh, me uh, mess. Mm -hmm. Just. And how about your sibling? How many? A brother and a sister. Older than I was. I was the youngest one in the family. So three. Three. Yeah. Born in a house with a, with a doctor. Tell me about the school you went through. Well, Bridgeville High School. All the high schools in, De in Delaware were built by the DuPont Company ah. early in the 30s. Uh -huh. And they built a beautiful brick uh, school in Bridgeville, one in the, all up and down the, all up and down the uh, center of Delaware. I see. When did you graduate the high school? 1949. And what happened to you? What happened? I had I wanted to go to the University of Delaware and I couldn't get in, so I went to prep school. Why you couldn't get in? I was, wasn't very smart. I started too young. My I was six years old when I started. I should have been a little older. Mm -hmm. And so uh, to keep up with my friends, my mother put me in there, and and so I was I I was always I just got barely got through, and I was very small when I graduated because I was about weighed about 135 or 40 pounds. You are now a big man. Mm -hmm. So did you go to prep school? Yes. And what happened? Stayed there a year. Uh -huh. Got uh, Took some courses and got into the University of Delaware. Oh, what did you study? I don't know. I knew German was one of them. Agriculture. Did you know anything about Korea at the time? You are the intelligent class, right? University student. Did you know anything about Korea? I knew my brother was, had been in the Korean War. Uh, I got the inf information from him as I got older, you know. He, he when, what is your brother? Tell me about your brother's uh, name and when he went to Korea. Nor, uh, George V. Ruiz, my brother, he was in George B. V. V. He went through the Naval Academy and, and got into the Marine Corps from the Naval Academy. Naval Academy. Mm -hmm. Wow. And Marine? Yeah, yes, Marine. Yes. When did you, when did he go to Korea? Uh, probably in the early fifties. I was I wasn't paying much attention to him at that time. I had my own thing going on, so I didn't. I knew he, where he was, but he traveled all over the world just about. So he was, he must be an officer, right? He still is. 
he, but he's uh, 86 years old and uh, very uh, having pro his having problems. Did what did he tell you about Korean his service and Korean War? He he really he really didn't tell me much about it, the Korean War. It was more about the uh, the the next war. Uh, Vietnam? Vietnam, yeah. Why didn't he tell you about the Korean War? Uh, he was on a ship at that time. I think he was on sub he was submarines and different things. He was on a troop carrying submarines, and I don't know what, it, what all he did, but he, he met me up in Alaska at one time when I was there. Is he still alive? Yes. Where, where does he live? He lives in Florida, and uh, he's in pretty bad health. He's been in real bad health in the last year. Hmm. So that's how you came to know Korea? Uh, that and uh, when I went into the Air Force, I learned about Korea. Mm -hmm. When did you join the Air Force? 1951. Uh -huh. Do you remember the month and date? Oh, yeah. Uh, I got it here. Well, it was November of 51. Mm -hmm. Why did you join the Air Force? because I was going to get drafted out of high school. <laughs> and my brother said, you don't want to be in the Marine Corps or the Army. You get in the Navy or Marine or uh, Air Force or Coast Guard, whatever, bad war. Thing. Right. I'm, I'm technically blind in one eye, and I don't oh. know how I got in the Air Force. You know, I, I, I At the time, you mean? Mm -hmm. been, I've been that way since I was three or four years old. I had a disease or something in my eye. Then how did you get into the Air Force? I went... I wanted to be a bombardier. Hello, that's uh, and so I went to take an eye test and uh, I, I passed the first test with a, he had a little stick he put up your eye and I kind of cheated on it and then uh, yeah, we memorized it, right? I got further into it and I had to <laughs> do something more with the eye and he he caught me. He said, "How'd you get past? How'd you get past the first exam?" I said, "I cheated." He said, <laughs> and he was very nice. He said, "Well, we we can't get you into the into the air, into the, Air Force, not Air Force, but into Bombardier School or whatever. Oh. So, uh, so where did you go to receive basic military training? In, uh, trying to think of it, in up, up, upstate New York. I got uh, got out of there and went to uh, was shipped down to Othello, not, not Othello, but uh, to uh, Texas. Texas. By a troop train down uh -huh. there. And was at uh, Ellington Air Force Base uh -huh. in, in uh, Texas, outside of Houston, maybe 20 miles south of Houston. Stayed there less than eight eight months. I never went to school. I never went to any kind of tech school or anything else. And when they finally found out I hadn't, they asked me. Said, "What would you? You had all eights and one nine on your test, or all nines and one eight on your mental test." So what is that? That was a standard test they gave gave you in the Air Force. And full score is ten. Mm -hmm. So you were pretty good. Yeah. So I had you know I hadn't gotten it together mm -hmm. by that time. So he, um, they sh they uh, asked me what I wanted to do, and I said, well, I don't really know. I said, what what are some options? He said, well, that you could be in the tr uh, anything you want to do. I said, but. Uh, I, he said, "What have you? What your parents do, or what? How would? What would you do at home?" I said, "Well, I was on the farm." He said, "I said my father was a ham radio operator." He said, "How about the communications?" I said, uh -huh. "That sounds good. Let's, I'll do that." So, never went to school. Went OJT into uh, the school, and uh, stayed in 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 uh, Houston or whatever about four months, and then was shipped up to Alaska. And on a uh, on a ship, <laughs> coming on a, a ship coming out of San Francisco and went up on a boat boat and uh, uh, landed at Ellington. No, not Ellington. Uh, I'm trying to think of a big base. But anyway, I was on. Uh, they put me on a, another crew for uh, electronics, mm -hmm. which meant I really wasn't on electronics. I was on a crew to repair electronics uh -huh. physically and they had they had radar sites all over the west coast all the way up to all the alaska up the chain all the way around the top of alaska 
and all the way across the whole United States, looking for the watch for the Russians. Of course, we weren't too far. We could see the Russians, uh, and uh, I was taking. I had about there were six of us on this plane that we went out to change a, uh, a radar site thing, uh, one of the communication things, and I was just there to. Not technically, I was there to help clean up and bust the rocks and build the forms and pour the concrete. And uh, so I stayed, I stayed there about three months. And done. And the crew said, uh, the crew chief, he was a sergeant, said, "I'm leave. We're leaving. Uh, do you want to stay here and clean up the mess, get the boards and all that, and, and clean them up?" It was a brand new radar site. It had mm -hmm. just just been built up in the, on top of a mountain. And uh, I don't know how much you want to know. That's I don't want to go into too much detail. Here. So what I happened? Bore you to death. Anyway, um, so I stayed there. I stayed there on the job oh, oh, uh, for about a, three months. They didn't even know I was there because I I wasn't. I ne I should have left on the plane, but the plane we had we had didn't have a runway. We landed on the bay. We, yeah. So the the ice formed in the bay. I went over from Nome on a on a. Uh, on a pla pon uh, pontoon plane, and landed there, and went uh, went uh, landed there, and went up into the to the place where they had built the ba base, and uh, became part of the did the work. Left there, uh, I stayed there for a year, twelve months, and at that time, uh, I didn't stay. I stayed twelve. I stayed twelve months, but they gave you. A, they gave you when you got done. I, I got in. Finally, they. I'll get tired of this. I'll bring this together here. I stayed about two or three months not working. They're in the in the building. Mm -hmm. And so I finally went to the major and asked him what could I. I knew that it's the uh, amount of t time you spent in Alaska in an isolated radar site was a year. Mm -hmm. And if you stayed back at the home, back at the mainland, you got right. you stayed two years. So. I asked him, I said, I'd like to stay here permanent party. So they found out what I did, and they, I, I was made permanent party. In the meantime, my parents didn't know where I was because I traveled so much. And uh, so my father, being very boisterous, he, my mother asked, you know, he said, find out where he is. So he called Washington. You know, always mm -hmm. go to the Washington, to the commander of yeah. the Air Force, you know. So... <laughs> So they, they found out where I was, and then they sent a telegram to us, and uh, it's the camp, and then they told me I'd be on, you know, I could be part of the unit. So. And when what when was that? Fifty uh, early fifty one late or late fifty one. Mm -hmm. I went to Texas in uh, just all July or August. Well, it was a little before that, but it was hot in Texas. I know that, and then I got. I got up to in in Alaska about in August or late August, and winter starts there September. November. You talking about 1952? You said that you joined the Air Force in November of 1951, and you've been into Alaska for a long time. I was only up there a year. Yeah, so already it's 1952. I got out of there in. Uh, uh, it's about September, October of '52, mm -hmm. and went to Texas. No, I'd been to Texas. I went to uh, Washington State, Othello, Washington, which I was see. a radar base uh, on a mountain range, and we overlooked the the Hanford Atomic Works. It was our job to spot the plane and keep the planes out of that area. Mm. And we didn't have the planes, but we were there. We could saw it, see them. Then we'd have to uh, radio to uh, to the base, the main base, which I think mm -hmm. was up in, mm, I forget now. But they had jets there. They'd, they'd come and get, uh, find anything that was, see if anything was way. When were you discharged? Fifty-five. I got out three months early because I saw a poster on the board said if you dropped out of college, come in to uh, come into the Air Force, and you could get three out three months early. 
So you've never been in Korea? No. No. I could not see it. I could see Russia from there. We could see the Russian flag. Right, right. But, you, you know, there was Russia was not in the battle, but I don't know. You know, we hmm. that was our job. How do you... How do you think about this? You never been in Korea, but you still be called Korean War veteran. What is it? What is your understanding of this? That we were in during the Korean War. Right. Well, just by seeing the cars and the stuff that they were building and sending over here, plus we got that manual from the Korean War veterans, from the Korean War people, mm -hmm. and had the picture of the night lights in, in the south and the north, and you could tell that was but it was mostly from the, the manufacturing they'd done in the in the, all the stuff that they were building, mm -hmm. cars and stuff, Korean. Yeah. So you, it's an amazing kind of miracle story. It is, yes. Yeah. And, and the Koreans really appreciated what we did, and we've been hosted by them for several things, and uh, they really uh, treated us treat us very well. Mm -hmm. What is the impact of your military service upon your life? Well, I enjoyed it. Uh, I wanted to get away from the farm. <laughs> <laughs> My father was a slave driver. You yeah. know, really, he fired me thrice, twice when I was a little kid, eight, eight nine years old. Uh, we... <laughs> <laughs> we used to have, we had a big packing house where we had to pack the apples. We make we pack maybe fifteen hundred bushels of apples a day mm -hmm. and ship them different places. And I was only eight years old. And, uh, the uh, packing house was a me big metal roof alongside, and I would go out and throw apples up on the on the red roof and play for baseball. You know, catch those apples. And he was in the, he had an he was in his little office building. He could see me, <laughs> and he came out and grabbed me and said, "Let's I'm taking you back home. You get back." Get, <laughs> so he, he fired me. <laughs> <laughs> How can he fire you? Because <laughs> he didn't want me on. He did. He well, my mother got all over him for that, and they, I, I, I I worked my way back in. <laughs> but I had several adventures with him. Uh, they were very funny. And uh, so you want to get out of there? Uh. More, well, after I got older and went got out of high out of college, I went I went to the, on the farm with him and uh, my brother, the Marine, said, uh, "Do you want to be his step and fetch it?" <laughs> I said, "No." He said, "Well, then, you go back and get your diploma. Get go back to Delaware and finish up school there." So I did and got my diploma and and then went on my way. Did you get the GI Bill? Yes. Does that help? Oh yes. Yes, I worked summers. See, I worked summers on the farm, and then during the winter, I, well, when I went back to school, I'd uh, pay my partly on my own way, and the, with the GI Bill and uh, some summer work. What did GI Bill pay you? It was a hundred and some dollars a month, as I remember. Mm -hmm. I wasn't married. Well, I was married too. At the, toward the end of it, I was married, and uh, I think I got. I think they got more when I was married. So with that money, what were you able to pay? Pay for my food <laughs> and my tuition and all. How much was the tuition, remember? No, I don't remember. How do you like to be a Korean War veteran now? Oh, I love it. I, lo I mean, I've never, I never had any uh, uh, express experience with anybody ever. I never went, did anything after, before, after I got out of service. I never went to any kind of meeting or boom to bam, you know, so uh, being that they had a Korean uh, ca uh, people here, I wanted to join it. Mm -hmm. Anything you wanted, you want to add to this interview? No, I just think I've had a good life. I've worked hard and tried to be smart and save money and uh, invested right, and I feel very fortunate with, and a good health.